you know, um, we're not in court right now because of uh, how superbly uh, democracy was uh, was practiced all through northern New Mexico and, and Colorado. What they found was that uh, everywhere they went, there was great opposition from really good value places, not only because it might disturb, you know, the quality of life, but to protect the, uh, the waters and the animals and the, this, this, uh, this beautiful world that we live in. And uh, from uh, what Carol has uh, told uh, us, because she went to so many of those meetings, um, there was just a broad range of human beings, from ranchers to farmers to um, college students to just, uh, they, they were taken aback. The Air Force was not happy. They thought they could slam this thing through. And uh, I think that's a very big reason why uh, now we, uh, we have a, they suspended it for the time being. We'll hear about it again. But um, uh, I think we've, collectively, uh, we've laid the groundwork for uh, this particular expansion to be turned down. And, um, it did, and it, it's going to be very important because there'll be another effort to do it in some other way. But um, so I'm very happy that we can be here now and not be uh, uh, scrambling to uh, uh, to respond to a legal situation at this point. Could could you say a little bit more about how you know they abandoned it and why? Well, I, you know, know I have some actual like quotes from their documents and. And what is being planned? And I, um, I hope that you can see it. The, I, I put together this. I'm not going to read anything. I know all of you are capable of reading, but I'm very much a visual learner, and uh, I wanted to put some of the graphical things that just, when I see them, literally make my heart stop. Um, when I realize what it is we're up again. So the big picture is going to start global to, new, to the United States, to our little wonderful corner of the world. And I'm going to do that with some pictures. The Pentagon, there's always thing, how many bases do we even have? We know that they list 5,000 sites in the U.S., territories, and overseas. I know you can't read some of these, but you can see this is the War Resister League budget that actually puts everything into the military column that should be there, including veterans' benefits, veterans' health care, and it shows in the magenta how much money we're spending on war and past wars in the United States. It's almost half of all of the money that we have as a country. This, I couldn't even read it either, but it's a map that shows the tentacles reaching out all over the world. And we're going to post this, uh, this data on probably Cultural Energy will have it, Peaceful Skies will have it. So if you want to learn more about any of these charts or tables, you'll be able to read it online. There are 47 Air Force bases in the lower 48. Uh, that's the, the stars on the map, but that doesn't even include, and this surprised me, 108 National Guard bases with aircraft, 35 naval air stations, 34 marine air bases, and 50 army airfields. There are 274 military airfields in the United States, continental United States, not Alaska, Hawaii, or anywhere else. Uh, it's not even an accurate map. This was the Department of Defense map. You'll notice that Kirtland Air Force Base is not on there. This is the south, what's called the Southwest Defense Complex. This is just in those Southwest states military bases and airspace. Which, when I saw this map, I thought, why do we need more to protect the border in Arizona? Am I missing something, or is there a whole border already military bases? 
I had no idea how extensive uh, things were here in the southwest. So then we get, this is a map of Canon's current airspace and flight plans. Um, all the yellow are the same as this great map that we have that some of us have seen as the black areas, which are the military airspace in New Mexico. And this, one of our pilots uh, brought this map. This is what is proposed to be the LADA portion of New Mexico. So we already have so much airspace. So the pale yellow are actually in here on black, but all of those lines are approved military flight routes, which they can fly as low as 100 feet above ground level. Where's the house on that map? On yours? See that whole curve? Mm -hmm. That a straight line. Right by the aircraft. So, the whole idea that somehow we don't have enough airspace on the face of it for the military training, or Canon doesn't, is a little shocking. So in 2005 was when Canon was saved by... Um, the Defense Department decided not to close Cannon, uh, and they started working on what they call a massive, in their own documents, Cannon calls it a massive expansion, and it is, from what it was. Um, they got around to telling us in 2010 that we were somehow going to be involved in this, that the airspace here was very desirable to Cannon. In 2011, the public, we said no. We did not want it. And now we're at 2012 and we're looking at what does the future hold for us. This is what Canon's future holds for us. This is what you can't see off camera is a gigantic C-130 Hercules full of fuel. This is their fuel pump uh, from which they connect to the Air Osprey aircraft while it's flying and refuel overhead, overhead, over headwaters, over everything. The cannon's commander, one time they let him on the radio on a KUNM interview, and he admitted that every refueling causes pollution. And now, when I saw that picture, here's this thing that's swinging around, everybody's flying. 250 nautical miles an hour to hook up there and to get that refueling accomplished. Why this became so important is we learned that the Osprey has a very small fuel tank and it actually, in the route that Cannon talked to us about, there would be three refuelings a night per flight if they do the whole 1,500 mile loop. So endlessly with that large Hercules aircraft overhead practicing getting that fuel hose into the place on the Osprey to refuel it. This is a picture taken near Raton. You'll notice that the Osprey is much lower than the mountain tops. This is how they like to fly. They can come Many of us who've experienced the low altitude flights in the past talk about a plane coming over the mountaintop and surprising you. They're going to actually be flying in the valleys and in the canyons. That's 300 feet above ground level in many of our communities. That's what they want. So what happened, I just learned recently, they did a full environmental impact statement for the expanded bed down at Cannon Air Force Base. In 2007, they had three meetings, Clovis, Fort Sumner, and Clayton. A total of 131 people showed up. They only received 11 written comments. It was so low under the radar that they were doing this massive expansion. 19 people spoke at three meetings in total. Uh, then we get to Taos kicked it off with the first, you know, really the first of these meetings. Um, 
They came with their letter, their FONSI, their finding of no significant impact. There were 17 meetings. 855 people showed up. This is all Canon's data. Uh, they didn't talk about how many people presented oral comments. We know hundreds did. And they received 1,898 comments from the public. That's what put the brakes on this project. It's the only thing that put the brakes on this project. So, yeah, there you go. But what shocked me was they can control the NEPA by deciding which papers of record they're going to advertise their scoping meetings and where they're going to do the scoping. That was a real shock to me. That um, I don't know why they decided to do so broadly uh, for the 2011. We're lucky they did, but they don't. They are not required to do that. They can hold all the meetings in Columbus and advertise it there and say a thousand people came and they all wanted it. So they've pulled the EA and the FONSI. Uh, the environmental assessment and the FONSI, the finding of no significant impact. And that's, Bonnie, to your question, these are the quotes they just recently posted a fuller press release on Canon's website about it. And they said, the why did they withdraw it? It became clear that a FONSI could not be reached for this particular project and still accomplish all of the training. But, and this but is a very important for us. What they're doing now is they're using their currently established routes. That's all those lines we saw on that map uh, coming around Cannon Air Force Base. Special use airspace, air visual flight, and excess capacity from other bases. I heard hundreds of people stand up and ask them at public meetings, why don't you just use airspace that you already have. And they consistently told us everybody was overscheduled and they didn't have any excess capacity. Last month, when they posted this, they said, oh, well, they're using the excess capacity at other bases. Yeah. That's very important because they lied in their environmental assessment. And now we have their own statement that they did it. However, Canon is still getting aircraft. It's still growing and it's going to grow until 2017. So what's coming up next? This is from Canon again. They still want it, and they're going to decide in early 2013. That's just a few months from now, and that's why we wanted to have to teach it now, so that enough of us form a critical mass here to let people know that we only delayed, we did not win. And that's a very important message for all of us to take because that's what they're putting out right now is that they're going to come back with something in 2013. And I'm expecting them to do an environmental impact statement, which many of us asked for. But it turns out that's not necessarily going to help us. I know no one can read that. But I want you to know that those things that are circled are very important. Uh, this is, Cannon has a 278-page general plan that's just like the wish list you would write to Santa Claus. We want this, we want that, we want this. And what this is saying is it's wind power is adverse for the Air Force. They don't want wind power. Many of us think it's good. A number of other Air Force bases are now opposing solar fields because it messes up their radar and their plans. So all of our desire as the American people for renewable energy is being blocked by the military, particularly the Air Force. Uh, the other thing it says is they're going to run out of water at Cannon. They don't have enough water. Uh, and the third thing is that this one here, 27 Special Ops Wing needs more airspace for low altitude training, and they will get it, is what they're saying in that far column that's underlined. So their plan is to get it. 
They had a setback, but they're still moving forward. Canon has no water, so here's what they say. A recent groundwater study indicates groundwater has been dropping at a consistent rate of two to two and a half feet a year for the last 10 years, and that uh, they have 20 years of groundwater left in that whole area. And guess who wants it all? I mean, you can forget all those dairy cows and all those nice dairies where we're getting New Mexico cheese from and other things. Cannon wants all of the available water. So then what happens? Well, our legislature steps in and they have a bill. It's been passed and repassed for Cannon Air Force Base. And what's highlighted is $5 million to Cannon to acquire land and water rights statewide. That's state funds. That's our state tax. As they're already getting quite a bit of money from the federal government. And that was kind of shocking to me when we're in such a drought situation. Um, our communities are really struggling, and our legislature is funding Canon to buy water rights, to buy up water rights. Um, this is... Uh, called New Mexico Land Grant Expands Air Force Training. And this is a press release issued by Cannon after State Land Commissioner Ray Powell and Governor Susana Martinez went to Cannon and gave them uh, basically the school children of New Mexico, who are the beneficiaries of state land, uh, gave Cannon 11,000 acres of state land to expand the Melrose bombing range. And it's a 35-year lease. Cannon paid a few million dollars for it. But this is our state government again. We are up against all, you know, political parties in New Mexico and political leadership. This is a place where there's real unity on the behalf of our elected officials to help advance this program for Cannon. Um, that was a shocker. So on December 17th, 2011, this is their headline uh, taken from Tom Udall's website. Budget bill includes $215 million for New Mexico Air Force bases. Um, so I just put in what was in there. Many of you might work for nonprofits that were hoping to get uh, $100,000 for something really important for our communities and we're told that the budget was really tight in 2011. Well, this is just Cannon's list of what they got in the defense appropriation bill signed in December. And that's not all, because there's more. And even though they're running out of water, they got their indoor airplane washer for $10.9 million. No, those airmen don't have to stand outside and wash those planes after they finish flying. So, but it just goes on and on. But we have three air bases in New Mexico. So, of course, Kirtland got $25 million to support nuclear mission. They're the nuclear weapons sustainment center. Holloman got their lineup of stuff, too. They got $5.8 million for the F-16, which is being pulled out of operation by the Air Force for the F-22 and the F-35. So someone felt they should get it anyway, even though uh, it's about $10 million for the F-16. is not going to be flown anymore by the military for defensive activities. So this was just December of 2011. But what I learned about the EIS process is pretty disturbing. They only have to say what they're going to do. It actually doesn't protect the bad things from happening. So what they will say is, this is how much air pollution will happen from the refueling. This is which cultural treasures will be harmed. This is the kind of wildlife that will be affected. All of that will be in there and they will still be allowed to go forward using NEPA unless we stand up. And the ruling uh, Peaceful Skies and Amigos Bravos, when we commented on the environmental assessment, the draft, 
we have both called for the Department of Defense to do a true baseline of all of their activities so that they can, they have to do a baseline and cumulative impacts of what anything new will do to the environment. What they do now is they say, here's what we're already doing and we're just going to add a little bit more on top. That is not, there has never been a true baseline uh, for what the Department of Defense as a whole. Because Canon wants us to see their airspace. This is their MOA, their military operation area, as separate from White Sands Missile Range, Holloman. It's all one sky. They don't really look like this when they're flying. There's not big, you know, lines in the road. They fly where they want. <laughs> One court ruling we think is very favorable for us if we have to sue is the whole thing on cumulative impacts that the court has ruled that on this tyranny of small decisions or death by a thousand cuts scenario. That's an actual ruling from the court that they had to, the FAA had to go back and come up with a true cumulative impact uh, statement. And these were for flights over the Grand Canyon. So that is one thing that's hopeful. Uh, so what is Holloman? They're a stealth bomber base. Um, that we learn through Peaceful Skies. They have their own organization, Save Our Skies, of neighbors of Holloman. <coughs> They're already doing 150,000 flights a year out of that base. Training flights. Now, um, the small communities are affected. They carry live ammunition. Uh, we believe that the flights over our head would also carry live ammunition because then they go to their bombing range that every Air Force base has and they practice bombing. That's the purpose of Melrose, is the bombing range for cannon. They just built an adobe village at Melrose that to me I saw very quickly one photo in the Cannon Air Force Base presentation. It looks exactly like Taos Pueblo. It was like heartbreaking to see it. Uh, they will not release the PowerPoint presentation, at least to me. Uh, we've requested it through channels. Uh, Save Our Skies, the the sonic booms there are strong enough that it breaks windows in people's homes, it sets off their car alarms, it causes all these problems. What about Kirtland? We in New Mexico have an Air Force base whose priority, I'm not sure what this means, to strengthen gains in the nuclear enterprise mission. I do know there are over a thousand nuclear weapons stored at Kirtland Air Force Base and that they're the center if the Air Force were to ever drop a nuclear weapon again, it would come probably board one of these Kirtland planes they're practicing all the time. They conduct, their mission is to conduct nuclear operations. Now, Kirtland's in trouble because they had a 50-year jet fuel leak. Uh, this is from the Associated Press. 24 million gallons of jet fuel, twice the size of the Exxon Valdez oil spill, seeping into an underground aquifer and steadily toward this drought-stricken city's largest and most pristine water wells. And there's a lesson in what happened to Kirtland. They said it was 100,000 gallons. Then they drilled test wells. Every test well they drilled came up with perchlorate and benzene and other toxic carcinogenic items in the water, and they kept moving the wells out. They've now drilled 130 monitoring wells, and that's how they know it's more likely 24 million gallons <coughs> of jet fuel. It, has that happened to Cannon? We don't know. Uh, it's possible. No one's going to tell us. This was a picture on Kirtland's website, uh, Open House.
that they just held. I guess you're never too young to get going there. Um, that's a 50 millimeter machine gun. Now what about White Sands? 2.2 million acres. That area in New Mexico is larger than Connecticut, Rhode Island, and the District of Columbia combined. Is 17% of all the land owned by the U.S. Army is in New Mexico at one base. And their mission is so offensive to me. We will aggressively expand our customer base of traditional and non-traditional DOD, other government agencies, foreign military and commercial programs. All of our air bases are rent bases also. We knew that Holloman had the German Air Force base there. Uh, I didn't know that Canon has an arrangement with Singapore and some other air forces that are also training there. We, they never told us which of the flights we would be exposed to would actually be training by uh, foreign pilots from other countries' air force. Um, and it's very hard to try and find that out. So where's that economic benefit for military spending in New Mexico? The red, which includes Curry County where Cannon is, and these are, this is poverty in New Mexico, and the red is the highest uh, poverty. We're not really seeing any economic benefit. There's one tiny little like white island in the middle. That's Los Alamos County. In case you were wondering, it's not a mistake, but we're not finding any economic benefit from all of the billions and trillions of dollars invested in New Mexico. Uh, I know you can't read this, it's child poverty. Uh, Curry County is much higher. Uh, than many other places, children under 18 in poverty. This is a real tragedy. New Mexico, again, was ranked the worst place in the United States to raise a child as far as public fund that goes into education, child care, income support. So when people say that there's been economic benefit, ask them where it is. We're not seeing it. We're not. Every town is starting a food bank if they don't already have it. Taos, I think, has five different food banks right now. This is a very rich agricultural area. We should be exporting food, not getting hand-me-downs from food corporations to hand out to the community. This is called the Elephant Walk. Uh, this is the F-16s at a single base. Each plane costs $45 million. It, Google Elephant Walk U.S. Military, and all over the world they do this elephant walk. It's where they line up all their planes and they burn fuel, just like getting ready, marching along. It's pretty. This one is a very horrific photo to me because I look at that and then I think about the parent that called me that, you know, is so upset that even the school, um, recitals in our school district is so underfunded that now the parents have to pay a fee to go see their kids in the dance concert and other things and they can't afford to go and our, my school district's only four days a week and you know it just goes on and on and on and then I find a picture like that and it's just so horrific but I do have good news so and I'm going to end with the good news since we formed Peaceful Skies, we've learned that all over the United States, and now we're actually networked very heavily with a group in Japan, communities are standing up for the first time and really forming organizations. Tucson Forward, an amazing community organization in Tucson, where they have an airbase that the city has grown up around that carries live ammunition and does sonic booms over the University of Arizona. Residential neighborhoods with live munitions. Uh, Colorado has a number of organizations, Not One More Acre, Grasslands Trust, Conejos County Clean Water. They formed a coalition of 17 state and local environmental organizations to fight the latter. Idaho, Save Our Valley, uh, New Mexico, our coalition and Save Our Skies, North Dakota Peace Coalition, Vermont has a group, and hopefully we'll have time to hear a little bit about that, called Stop the F-35. And then Japan 
Japan's premier peace group, Umbrella Coalition, is called Peace Depot in Tokyo, and they found peaceful skies, and we have had four Japanese television networks in Taos and in New Mexico in the last month. Uh, Pat Lehan from the Las Vegas Peace and Justice Center was on Japanese TV. I had a picture of myself after an interview on Tokyo Sunday paper. Uh, another big Japanese paper is coming next week because Japan, particularly the people of Okinawa, are now fighting the U.S. military over the deployment of ospreys there. And they found Taos and Peaceful Skies Coalition. And they, you know, I had to tell them, we're really kind of an ad hoc group. They're like, well, we want to come and film you all in your office. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it turns out in Japan, if you form a formal non-governmental organization, you are automatically funded by the government. Because that's, that's just how they do things there. I know a number of European countries, the government also fund the non-governmental organizations. So they just assumed, because we have accomplished so much through our grassroots work, and for this I, you know, most of you here have been with us from the very beginning, and I just have to tell you how, you know, much strength we've gotten from knowing how, you know, Taos supported these efforts and said, no, we're not going to have this here. Here's a sign they sent from Japan. This is from Okinawa. Um, and I'll just close with, this is what we're about. We are somewhere so special and so peaceful and so quiet that we think it's worth fighting for. So.